Hello, good evening, my liberty loving friends. My name is Martha Bueno, and this is Latin Libertarians. And I'm here tonight, as always, with hopefully some good Wi Fi, Zach Foster. Hello, hello. hello. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, it took a lot of work to regain my humanity after I fully synthesized with Skynet uh, that couple episodes <laughs> ago. It was a, it was a really bad episode. But, you know, us being libertarians, oh. we prevented uh, the the future from Terminator. Yeah, well, you just skipped a beat there with your Wi-Fi, so let's hope that we do a little better this time. So, anyways, uh, welcome everybody to Latin Libertarians, where we tell you what's going on in the world of Latin America, at least in libertarian terms. And today we have a very special episode, at least I think it is. It's a subject that I think is really important. What is it, Zach? Well, uh, part of it is immigration. Part of it is a potential civil war. Yeah, kind of important stuff, I would say. Kind of important. Kind of important stuff. So we're, we're going to get into a, a visual and show you guys exactly what we're talking about. But let's just say influential people on the farther side of the right are actually floating the idea of starting a conflict in America. And even though it's about the 2020 election, and they're just really freaking angry that they lost the election and they refuse it because most of that cult does not have the ability for, for self-assessment, self-analysis, self-criticism. But uh, they're using immigrants, uh, illegal immigrants as scapegoats for, for excuses to start this and pretending like uh, citizens en masse are being oppressed by illegal immigrants, which as somebody who is deeply with illegal immigrants who are in ICE detention. I've been involved in that project for a year and a half now. Wow, time flies. Uh, yeah, so th this idea that immigrants are coming over here and they're getting all kinds of public benefits and it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, let's let's visual and show people exactly what we're talking about. Let's do it. Yeah, this, so this is not hyperbole, people. This We're, we're gonna let you see for yourself. <laughs> We shall let you see. No first. exaggerations here. All right. The people coming north from Latin America, Central America, in a lot of cases, are aware that there's a new administration in the United States and the policies are different? Oh, most definitely. They're telegraphing it down there. Uh, what do you, when you see t shirts with people say, Biden let me in, Biden let me in, they're all over. I mean, you know, it's telegraphed back down there. One of them comes over and they'll tell you. As soon as I get over and get through, I'm calling back home and I'm telling 10 more to come that I got in. Come on. We're sending a message that, hey, the border's open. Come on in. Do what you want. You know, what, why aren't we enforcing the laws that are on the book? That are already on the book that says you can't cross that border illegally or whatever. But yet we're going to reward you with putting you in a nice hotel or, or give you a $1,400 Visa card, debit card that you can use while you're here in the States. You know, till you get established or whatever, and how many times do they replenish? What do you mean, give a, a fourteen dollars Visa debit card? I'm, not, I, I haven't been able to confirm this yet, but I am told that they're giving you these immigrant families or in these hotels, they're giving them a fourteen dollar, I mean, a fourteen hundred dollar Visa card that they can. Why do we have a real insurrection at some point? Like, why, why would we put up with this? Well, in my opinion, you're closer than you've ever been in our country of getting to that. I think we're closer. Well, I feel closer to that. I mean, this is absolutely, it's, it's, it's beyond insulting. It's an, it's. So I haven't yeah. been able to confirm this, but illegals are getting $1,400 uh, debit cards for taxpayer money. And then immediately the response is, why don't we have a real insurrection? My favorite so part a couple there things is. For an extract from there. Yeah. My favorite is, I haven't been able to confirm this, but this is what's going on. Really, if it's going so on- So in other words, you're making crap on? up. Making <laughs> crap up or just repeating hearsay. All right, so we're gonna start a quote unquote real insurrection over this supposed <laughs> $1,400 that the illegals are allegedly, at. ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would love to meet the illegals who are getting $1,400 from the Me government. Too. So that they can at least, you know, buy me dinner for for some of the stuff that my group has been doing for them. Because uh, at this point, the group to which uh, I'm a volunteer outside of the Libertarian Party, we have directly intervened in close to 60 cases of ICE detainees. Uh, all but one of them was a bona fide refugee 
community uh, who had been a victim of violence or some sort of economic aggression, whereas the entire state micro focused and targeted uh, on, uh, on those individuals. But the idea that they're getting $1,400 of taxpayer money, so why don't we start a real insert? Ladies and gentlemen, they're outraged about what they think is going on, even though this, this guy, uh, the guy's name is John Laughlin, and he's the mayor of Texas. Uh, for starters, everybody in the Libertarian Party of Texas, Uvalde, Texan, Uvalde Texas has a population of 15,000. Somebody dislodge that vice mayor. Somebody dislodge him from office, all right? We have the party to do that. Federal races, uh, go, you know, governorships, that's usually the races where we get our butts kicked as libertarians. City council, mayors, vice mayors, we can do that stuff. Get rid of this, this cuckoo who's going around spreading this crap because first he'll say this and then other people like Tucker, oh, why do we have a real insurrection? Which, okay, so that people building a gallows on the steps of the Capitol, uh, all those people literally storming the Capitol, brawling with the police, multiple cops said, dude. All right, the Blue Lives Matter people were using Blue Lives Matter flags and Trump flags to try to beat police officers to death, which I'm not even defending the cops, all right? Dude, this is a Libertarian Party TV show. I'm just saying to spade. The Blue Lives Matter people were trying to kill cops and try to kill Mike Pence and other members of Congress specifically to, I guess, they thought that was going to cancel the results of the election. No. So they're using illegal immigrants as you know the excuse, but this is really... This is really a bunch of conservatives who are really pissed off that they lost the election and they feel disenfranchised, even though they were not disenfranchised. Well, you know, we have been telling both sides for years. The left, that's the freaking problem when you have such a powerful government with such powerful high offices is if you do not have that power, it is really easy for other actors in government and in politics to crap on you. Fabulous. That does not mean let's start a quote unquote real insurrection so that we can get rid of these illegal immigrants and the $1,400 debit cards that they're allegedly getting and also return Donald Trump to the presidency, you know, auxiliary details. <laughs> you know, no, and it's not just it's not just Tucker Carlson. All right. We've got more. Roll the we next one. <laughs> Roll uh, the next one. Good which Lord. one do you want to go with, Zach? Uh, do we want to go with uh, the general on La La Land or do we want to go with uh, the guy who looks like Quagmire and nobody would trust him with their underage daughter? Ooh, I like that one. He's from my... Uh... Oh, you want to go with Quagmire? That's um, right. Well, he I is from was... your state. Yeah, I was going to say, let's go with the guy from my state just because, well, we're going with everything at some, you know, might as well. Here we go. Really? This guy. The internet's all monitors out in Silicon Valley, they think they can suppress us, discourage us. Maybe if you're just a little less patriotic, maybe if you just conform to their way of thinking a little more, that you'll be allowed to participate in the digital world. Well, you know what? Silicon Valley can't cancel this movement or this rally or this congressman. We have a second amendment in this country, and I think we have an obligation to use it. Is that not a call okay. to arms? What? <laughs> what? Okay. The statement in and of itself, like if you isolated that statement, you stripped away all context, all context, uh, and, and the statement by itself, we have a response to use the second amendment. On the surface, by itself, no context, it comes off like a true statement because all of us would believe that, well, yes, we do have a responsibility to practice the Second Amendment, which means bear arms. This guy, though, Congress, the congressman that nobody would trust uh, uh, alone in a room with their underage daughter, he goes immediately from complaining about how Silicon Valley is censoring conservatives to it just immediately the jump off is we have a Second Amendment and we have a responsibility to you. Okay, the last time I heard somebody say we have a Second Amendment and a responsibility to use it, and other people agreed in a very solemn, somber manner, it was during the Bundy Ranch standoff in 2012. Uh, and I knew that because a lot of my friends from the LA County and San Bernardino County and Riverside County LPs 
we're meeting up with, uh, you know, the Oath Keepers and the Three Percenters and these other constitutionalist groups. This was almost a decade ago, back when they actually cared about the Constitution. And uh, the Oath Keepers were not just militias for Donald Trump, but they went to Bundy Ranch to go help this old rancher protect his property from a federal that was encroaching on it. And, you know, the Bureau of Land Management, they didn't even bring the FBI out there. It was their own people with armored personnel carriers and, and all this crap that I've only ever seen on military bases, you know, not out in the real world. Okay, that's one thing. And that's because the government was actually oppressing somebody in a very concrete format. So people very soberly had a standoff with the government and the feds because they were evenly matched. They backed off. They decided that the course of action they had originally set out to do that day was no longer going to be productive, profitable, and advantageous for them. So they backed off. This is something totally different, all right? This is somebody who is really mad that his Messiah and he himself got booted from social media. You know, it is, th that's a tough one because on one hand, you could make the argument that we are being censored, which you know, as libertarians, it, it's kind of funny for us that Republicans are crying about this now because uh, just what it was just a few months ago, both of us were were complaining about the commission of presidential debates. I don't, I didn't remember the the Republicans on the commission of presidential debates feel like people were being massively disenfranchised and like there was all kinds of voter fraud. And they were keeping the libertarians and the Greens off of the debate stage. No, that was not a problem. There's more. I don't remember the GOP was complaining today. Now that you brought this up, sorry, I had to cut you off because the go GOP ahead, go today ahead. tweeted about how the debates are rigged. I kid you not. And are how you they, serious? I swear to God. Now I have to find it. Go okay. ahead. Continue, but One I must half tell of you. the institution <laughs> that promised 40 years ago to keep third parties off the debate say One half of that institution is complaining about debates. That's funny. No, and, and also remember, uh, Congressman Ipatch down there in uh, uh, in, in Texas, uh, the guy with the the James Bond, the James Bond campaign video where he was doing a where he's doing a combat I'm jump. Sure. No, we do yeah. not have to say his name. No, but but do you remember he did that campaign commercial where he was doing uh, an airborne mm -hmm. like this this Tom Clancy style uh, military combat jump? It was a combat jump, and his target is literally a black man who's running for office as a Democrat. Like, okay, that, that was hyperbole. I don't think it ever actually occurred to Crenshaw or any of his people when they were making the commercial. Um, I don't feel you know, it would be silly to call that commercial right. a call for violence, even though, you know, the imagery is there. The imagery is, <laughs> it's pretty damn strong symbolism. That said, here we've got people talking about Silicon Valley. These private companies in Silicon Valley are censoring us. Therefore, we have a responsibility to use a second. All right. So you're going to roll up to some corporate office in San Jose. Uh, and there's probably going to be some 26 year old, you know, just got out of the army, uh, a work in security. And he just wants to, you know, work a quiet job. Then you've got all your college interns and your, you know, your recent college grads who are working your first, second year jobs. And they're all broke as crap. And none of these people are making decisions for how these social media uh, uh, platforms actually run. That's basically something that like Mark Zuckerberg does when he's not racing to see who can become Lex Luthor the fastest between his billionaire buddies. This guy's talking about showing up there. That, that's really what he's alluding to. Let's show up to Silicon Valley with our guns and let's make these private companies stop. Bro. All right. Okay, if let me tell you what social media is getting a bunch of like, <laughs> if, if they're getting stuff from the government, if they're getting free stuff from the government, then you could make the argument that social media is at least partially a public utility or a good because taxpayer dollars are subsidizing that, which libertarians have been against the government giving money or special privileges to private business in the first place. We don't want special privileges. We just want the bureaucrats and the red tape people and everybody else know you cannot go out there and create your own job. We want them to get the hell out of the way. Uh, the other, the 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 flip side is I'm gonna I'm gonna go full Misesian here, all right? I am going to quote Ludwig von Mises in the Anti-Capitalistic Mentality, which is one of my favorite Mises books, and he says, "To the grumbler who complains about the unfairness of the market system, only one piece of advice can be given: If you want to acquire wealth, then try to satisfy the public by offering them something that is cheaper or which they like better." 
try to supersede the competing brand by mixing another beverage. Equality under the law gives you the power to challenge every millionaire. It is in a market not sabotaged by government imposed restrictions, exclusively your fault if you do not outstrip the the movie star and the boxing champion. So I would like to say right now to all the MAGA people who are super angry because private companies decided we're not going to let these people continue to publish their election conspiracies about how this was allegedly stolen from Donald Trump. No, 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 no. They just decided we're not giving those individuals a platform, all right? And, and, and the Ludwig von Mises, let's adapt that. It is exclusively your fault, Mr. Cranky Magahead, that you have not gone out and built a social media platform that can rival Mark Zuckerberg or, or MySpace from 10 years ago or, or, or you know, Twitter. Ten years it ago, is your what fault. What decade do you think this is? MySpace hasn't been cool for like 20? I don't know. <laughs> Well, so anyway. I, I just remember signing up for MySpace in 2005 when I was still in high school and seeing like I immediately had one friend and the guy's name was Tom. And I'm like, oh, why did Tom add me as a friend? So I click on his profile and I see his blog. Oh, I went on a vacation in Hawaii or something like that. And I said, oh, Tom must have seen all the photos of me with a Hawaiian shirt. And he thought that was cool. And he added me as a friend. So welcome to my MySpace, Tom. And like I go to the school the next day, I'm telling my friends, hey, man, I already got one friend on, on MySpace. And they're all telling me, was it Tom? And I'm like, bro, how'd you know? <laughs> OK, that was that was a mayor of Uvalde, Texas level, not knowing what the hell you're talking about. But my excuse is I was a teenager. I was not a grown man and a public official uh, uh, giving uh, another uh, a pedagogy. I'm just going to say it. A lot of my fellow party members are going to be really angry with me. And I'm going to say it right now. Unless you're 12 or 85, if you're a grown man wearing a bow tie, you look absolutely ridiculous. All right. That's just my opinion. All right. Take it with a grain of salt. If you don't all right, agree, let's not give my, uh, advice on getting all right, fine, fine, fine. If, so you, if you're going to wear a bow tie, at least don't try to start a civil war. Otherwise, I will make fun of your fashion choices. All right. So if you don't try to start a civil war, I will leave your clothes out of my mouth. Okay, so the the, te the tweet that the GOP sent out today was, quote. Well, was it that one? Yeah, basically. The <laughs> at GOP needs assurances that the CPD will make meaningful reforms to the debate process by working with stakeholders to restore the faith and legitimacy it has lost. Uh, stakeholders, stakeholders, that is, that's your golden word right there. They need to make it fair for stakeholders. Who is a stakeholder? Well, the only people who have really had a real stake in the presidential debates have been the front runners who reach uh, who, who get their their party's nomination. That's the Democrat presidential candidate and the Republican presidential candidate. We Los Libertarios have been trying to become stakeholders in the CPD forty one years now, and they keep telling us no, thank you, go home, and that's if we get an answer. So. What are the MAGA people crying about at this? All right, remember, Dan Crenshaw tried to sue our entire party off the, off the ballot in Texas, all right? 41 libertarian candidates. Thank God that they won the case. Thank God that they won the case. Alvin Kloss says Joe Biden is a terrible president. Well, I, I never that. once said that he was a good president. It's just we have not gotten around to tooling on the Democrats yet for this episode just give us time. We will get there. However, we believe strongly in giving credit where credit is due. So right now we are giving credit to all the MAGA cult members who are uh, abandoning their pro-life principles by trying to start a civil war and then keep refugees from communism at the southern border out and use them as an excuse to start the war. So, they are not pro-life. Not all of well, them. Well, that's what they say. So I, I'm just saying, they by are... trying to start a civil war over dumb crap, you are not pro-life anymore. It is what it is. You are not pro-life anymore if you are trying to start a quote-unquote real insurrection, especially over dumb... We all know it's about the election, they but they're using... They are not pro-life. Can we stop using that word? Because it really drives me crazy where the party that likes to drop bombs on people halfway across the world is... Pro -life. And, and sorry, send, like send refugees of communism back to communism. Uh, were, were the Republicans the only ones that did that? No, that started under Obama. That said, uh, the Trump administration ratcheted it up 
And now these people, while complaining about fourteen hundred dollars for illegal immigrants, which they have not been able to con- uh, to confirm, now they want to start complaining exist. about the system as fair, bro. And then also, I see exist. a Republican talking that about doesn't exist. Joe Bullshit. Biden. Why are there kids in cages at the border, Joe Biden? How can Republicans are the only ones who care about kids at the bit? And I'm seeing this. I'm and I'm going, dude. The gaslighting factor is insane here. This is hardcore intense gaslighting, right? I have argued with deportation officers who have told me, well, this is the new policy, blah, 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 blah. We're the, the Nuremberg defense. We're just doing our jobs. You cannot tell me that Joe Biden is president, so all of a sudden you really care about kids in the cage. It's not about the kids in cages. They're pissed off because they lost an election. They're going to try. All right, you know what? Let's go to the next clip, the one of uh, General Russiagate. Yep. Let's go. Simple Marine, I want to know why what happened in Minamar can't happen. Minamar. Here. I know. <laughs> It should happen. It should happen here. There's no reason why what happened, Myanmar. I love that. There's no reason why what happened in Myanmar can't happen here. It should happen. All right. And that was retired General Michael Flynn, who was also one of Donald Trump's national security advisors until he got caught up in Russia Gate. Now, why did he get caught up in Russia? Do, do we have the photo? Can we just show them the photo so they can see for themselves? We do. Have just show them the photo. photo. We do have that photo. All righty. So we have here a dinner in Moscow from 2015. At the center is one of my least favorite per- people in the world, Vladimir Putin. If you are a Russian Libertarian Party member, then Mr. Putin is very bad for your health. And, and so is the rest of his government. <laughs> to our left in that photo is Michael Flynn with his uh, hand up to his ear. And then in the forefront on the right side is Jill Stein, the uh, the Green Party's uh, perennial presidential candidate. Both of them, to my understanding, were paid to be at events. That event was held by uh, a, a coalition of NGOs that uh, talks about how important human rights are uh, in, in Russia and the, and the former Soviet states. Long story short, though, this is where U.S. prosecutors believe that Michael Flynn got into bed with uh, with Russian intelligence. And that's where the whole theory of, of Donald Trump being a Russian plant comes in. Um, when we look at the behavior of the Trump cult as a whole, as far as uh, casting doubt on the the results of the election, I'm not going to say the, le- the, the legitimacy of the election because libertarians have known for years that uh, uh, American elections are basically a board game. That said, based on what I have researched, and I have read the testimonies of people from the Trump campaign in federal courts and in state courts across, after 20 cases, I got bored because it was repetitive. Not an exaggeration, I got bored after 20 cases. Uh, They have not been able to prove anything, not a single thing. Their justices, Barrett, uh, Kavanaugh, all these people who who you thought would be big Trump loyalists, they gave them their fair day in court, and there was nothing there. And then after that, they said, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to hear this anymore. Anyway, so that's where the, the Russiagate stuff comes in. We do know that on a number of occasions, Michael Flynn was paid a lot of money to go meet with different Russian people and, and to go do speaking events in Russia. One of the reasons why we know those NGOs pay a lot of money is uh, two reasons. Number one, Dennis Kucinich, uh, former Democrat congressman uh, and a couple times Democratic candidate, he actually got duped by one of the NGOs that Putin's government uses uh, to hold that type of uh, event and try to get government people and leading business leaders and political leaders from other countries to go to these events and try to buy them off. It, it, it's soft power. Um, it's what they're doing. The Kremlin is trying to buy people off. Now, remember, Yes, we libertarians do not believe in our government intervening in the affairs of other countries. That said, wouldn't it be really nice if other countries' governments were not trying to intervene in American affairs? Because when you've got the Kremlin trying to influence retired generals who are going in to become 
incoming president's uh, uh, national security advisors, American presidential candidates. Uh, you know, there's a lot of question marks there. There is a hell of a lot of question marks there. And the other reason we know that people get paid a lot of money. Anyway, Kucinich admitted to having been paid on just one occasion $20,000 to go speak at a pro-Russia alleged human rights NGO. And eventually people confronted him about this group that he was involved with, and he had no idea who they were. So he came clean about it. He came clean about it. And he said, I really thought that this was an organization promoting human rights. I had no idea that this was just some dictator's propaganda outlet. Uh, another individual was Max Blumenthal. Uh, he used to be against the Assad government for you know humanistic reasons until he sold out to the Russian communist to uh, Max Blumenthal is another person we know who has been paid there. A as a matter of fact, that photograph that you saw, Max Blumenthal was there that night. He's not in the photograph, but this guy was there that night. Uh, later on, Max Blumenthal would go on to get cash awards for uh, uh, journalism from other similar types of NGOs uh, who are reporting about, oh, Assad is actually really good. Uh, these people who are killing all these civilians, yeah, that's actually the rebels, uh, 100%. That's not the government. So what I'm saying is, yes, we and our government should not be involved in other countries. That said, I really do think that other countries are trying to get involved in our affairs here. And I really do believe that Michael Flynn is is one of the, the gateways for that. And the fact that this MAGA cult specifically are the ones who are trying to start a quote unquote real insurrection. And, 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 they're, and they're saying that Myanmar is good. Uh, we, we didn't show them here tonight, but I went on Fox News and I went on Newsmax and I was watching interviews with other you know, man on the street type interviews with run of the mill Trump supporters. Hey, you know, what do you think about Myanmar? And they say, oh, my gosh. Yeah, we should be like Myanmar because over there they had election fraud and then the army, they took over and now they're in. No, you stupid fools. Myanmar, which used to be Burma, has been in a brutal military dictatorship for decades, all right? Remember, these were the bad guys in Rambo. Do you remember the fourth Rambo movie that came out about 10, 12 <laughs> years ago with Sly Stallone? That's the one where he goes to Myanmar. And who was the bad guys? It was the army of Myanmar. And who are they hurting? They were butchering all these Karen, with the, which is an ethnic minority. They were butchering all these Karen villagers. And then when the, when the uh, very innocent white American Christian missionaries show up to Myanmar thinking that they're going to do their missionary work. They get captured by the, by the Myanmar army uh, and they're about to get killed until Rambo goes saves them. Right. So these are the people who butcher civilians and who would even kill white American Christians. All right. And now, Oh, we need to do, we need to be like Myanmar because there was lecture front. <laughs> I would be terrified if our government was anything like the government of Myanmar. As a matter of fact, if the situation in the United States was actually comparable to Myanmar, we would have a real civil war. Now, over there in Burma, they've been having an insurgency. That's what people don't know. All right. That's what these MAGA idiots don't know. There has been an insurgency in Myanmar for 20 years. And it's not like they're coming close to overthrowing the government. All that the Karen rebels are able to do is just keep the government troops out of their villages sometimes by inflicting casualties. That's it. That's the best they can do. Other than that, uh, war planes literally go and bomb villages, right? All this crap that was really horrible when we were doing to villagers in Vietnam, Myanmar government is doing the same thing. And these people want us to be like Myanmar because they're mad about a presidential election. Bro. Bro, stop. Full stop. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, all you libertarians who have really close friends and family members, you hear them saying this garbage. Just tell them, dude, stop. Just stop. This is silly. This is ridiculous. You don't know what you're talking about. All right. Now, according to Mr. Carlson, January 6th was a fake insurrection. OK, it was a fake insurrection, but there was still a body count. All right, cool. Maybe the, the New York Times allegedly exaggerated that uh, Officer Sicknick did not die from, from injuries sustained from brawling with protesters. But multiple other police officers from that agency went and committed suicide. They went and committed suicide, all right? Uh, whether it was feelings of guilt for not jobs or whether the rumors that there was collusion between certain Capitol Police officers 
and the MAGA militia members who are totally all civilians there for, for peaceful purposes. Um, I don't know. But what we do know, several officers committed suicide and people just dropped dead during that rally. Because remember, a lot of Trump supporters are older folks. It doesn't say that old folks don't vote Democrat. It's just that in this day and age, more old folks vote Republican. So you've got a lot of folks who are up there in age. Maybe they don't care of their bodies. All I know is one Trump supporter died from a heart attack. Just he dropped right there on the steps of the Capitol. Ploop, expired. Another Trump supporter had a stroke. Same thing. He just dropped right there in the halls of the rotunda. Just dropped. Uh, another Trump supporter. All right. Uh, the, the, they get mad because Ash was shot by the, the Capitol Police officer or by the Secret Service um, right before they actually broke into the last set of doors before the doors that take you right into the chamber. They're crying about Ashley Babbitt getting shot. But what about the other Trump supporter? There was a gal literally who was wearing a Don't Tread on Me shirt. Drywall. Oh, her name was Ashley Babbitt. Thank you. I said Ashley Babbitt a minute ago, but thank you for correcting me for things I already said. Anyway, there was a gal wearing a Don't Tread on Me t-shirt. She was wearing a Don't Tread on Me t-shirt. And she got trampled to death by other Trump supporters in the mayhem. That is absolutely insane. And then after that, though, the cops started committing suicide. So that was a fake insurrection, but it still has a hell of a body count. It has yes, a hell of a body count. So what, what does a real insurrection look like? Please, all you Tucker Carlson defenders, uh, all the culture warriors, what, what does it look like? Because I see a guy who's you immigrants, the, the, the refugees of communism and the refugees of drug cartel violence that I work with. That is the excuse. For, for starting the insurrection. And also, I haven't been able to confirm this. Seriously, Texas Libertarians, Uvalde, run people for mayor, vice mayor, and city council in Uvalde. There's 15,000 people in the whole city. So I'm willing to bet the maximum quantity of voters is probably four or 5,000. Tops, we can do that. Get these idiots out of office, all right? Take away that title because once they stop being government people, they're going to be a lot less relevant. Oh, this guy's a mayor. Oh, this guy's a city manager. Oh, this guy's a, a, a state representative. The title has a legitimacy for all the statists who love to watch Fox News. Uh, I see Matt Gates getting mad that he, in, in the terms of Ludwig von Mises, failed to make a social media platform uh, of his own. So now we have to use the Second Amendment in Silicon. Dude, seriously. All right. No one is advocating against someone's right to self-defense. I believe that at Lexington and Concord, when the Minutemen fired, they were firing in defense. I do not believe that they were the first ones to start the shot. We will never know who fired the first shot. But one thing that we sure as hell do know, the people in Lexington and Concord actually lived there. The British Army did not. And then the British Army shows up saying, hey, give up your guns, all right? So no matter what, a government manufactured that situation, which became a crisis, which became armed combat. This is different. This is not the same. This is people angry that they lost an election and they want to start a civil war. This is the pro-life party. Do you see any libertarians talk about starting a real insurrection or going to Silicon Valley with our guns because of the way Joe Jorgensen was treated? Do we think that Joe Jorgensen would want us to go to Silicon Valley with our guns? This is an honest question, people. Do we think yeah. that Ludwig von Mises would want us to go to Silicon Valley with our guns? I don't um, think so. I think so, maybe he would have liked for another place, but definitely not Silicon Valley. <laughs> Same for <laughs> Joe. Maybe for another place, but not Silicon Valley. Well, uh, this is going to trigger the culture warriors, but if there is one place that Mises and Hayek did want people to show up with probably would have been uh, Austria and Germany uh, 1945. I'm, I'm just saying. Um, a lot of people forget these guys had to leave those countries because they were Jewish. And, you know, the Nazis, you know, that, that was a thing. How do but, we all uh, feel about those uh, emails that we've been looking at Fauci? Why do I feel like, like oh, the this Fauci is like emails? into that? I kind of feel like Fauci was the fall guy um, and he's kind of being set up. You know, what a coincidence. Um, what a coincidence you know, that she's uh, the fall guy. I don't know. Well, here's the problem. 
because right now Fauci is Satan if you are a Donald Trump supporter. My first question is, who brought him on? Seriously, who hired him? Who brought him on? Who put him in front of the TV cameras? Wasn't Joe Biden. Wasn't Obama. So who brought Fauci on? Can somebody tell me? Anybody? My lovely co-host, maybe? Yeah, it's your buddy. Why, why do you ask me these questions? You know who it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, Trump. You know, I hate saying that name. Zach, Trump on. brought on Fauci. <laughs> And the reason that that Fauci is Satan right now is because he went against the Trump line. He was critical of the president at a couple of times. And now that Trump is no longer the president, he's speaking freely. Uh, So that's why Republicans don't like him. Uh, Libertarians don't like him because his information was inconsistent. uh, Oftentimes that in itself, I'm not going to get into the weeds of that. You know, it was a new pandemic, but his information was consistent. There is conflicting information on masks, which we are not going to repeat that here because we don't want this YouTube video to get flagged because right now I don't feel like going out and starting my own video uh, uh, platform to compete with YouTube. Even worse. According to the advice of Ludwig von Mises. Platform. So even worse, we are under an obligation to not get the Libertarian Party's stuff canceled. To not get the Libertarian Party kicked off. Yes. Well, I do not need to get my plans for the next episode. (laughs) <laughs> yeah we'll we'll do it for the, another okay one. so one. so so uh, uh no no striptease in front of the live cameras on the libertarian party youtube page got it not all on right. purpose maybe not on purpose all right all right so <laughs> if a striptease happens accidentally that's another thing you're just not allowed to do, to do it on purpose there's been plenty uh, well, of those happening uh not mine it's like, like like the cia <laughs> like the cia talks about oh you know people they they just fell on my bullets it's the damnedest thing and i'll just be like well you know on youtube i just I just fell out of my clothes on the Libertarian Party YouTube. I asked the darkest thing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for all the people in the LNC and, and especially the media department who are sweating bullets right now, chill. We're not going there. But uh, uh, what There's I'm going to other- say is conflicting information and his willingness to lend himself to restrictions and lockdowns and things like that. That's the problem that libertarians have. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the authoritarian aspect. Um, I will speak my opinion Uh, I chose to wear a mask, not because I believed it was going to protect me from what people are breathing, specifically the reasons why, well, other than, yeah, I just didn't want to get hassled by the cops. It's like the, what's the word in Chinese, Uh, which means just make it through the day. Uh, And that's most most of the time I want to do. Ask in Spanish, Zach, but Chinese, really? (laughs) Somebody bring me Lily Tang Williams. (laughs) Anyway. So that's what I try to do, you know, most of the days when I'm working. Obviously, I believe that most of this crap is wrong, but Sun Tzu said you got to pick and choose your battles. Uh, if there's a big rally in front of the state capitol and there's, you know, things are at stake there, uh, whether a law is or isn't going to get passed or a governor is or isn't going to sign something that's a law, when the stakes are something like that, all right, cool, then I'll, I'll go out of my way to, to go fight the good fight. Um, I'm not going to you know, fight the good fight and argue with a private property owner like on a Tuesday afternoon, you know, especially when he's just some freaking minimum wage cashier at the Habit Burger. Sorry, I'm not that guy. All right, Jack. Let's stop complaining. There's other news happening in, in uh, Latin America. I like to talk about Cuba. Zach hates it. So I'm going to move on to my just favorite. I'm subject. supposed to talk about Cuba. Ah, uh, I I love talking about Cuba. Okay, I'm sorry. So, anyways, I was a Cuban um, LP guy, and then this lady had to go and be Cuban just to one up me. I see you over there, Martha. I'm sorry, I'm Cuban. Actually, sorry, uh, it's a weird. Way. Okay, anyway, so the uh, Cubans <laughs> and the Venezuelans <laughs> were. I already uh, see the the Miami Democrats. Martha Bueno is sorry to be Cuban. Boom. That's <laughs> that's what the Democrats are going to say all over Miami. Sorry, not sorry. You heard sorry. it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Please, nobody clip that out and share it with um, with uh, people running against me. Anyways, uh, I'm going to play as a quick clip of what happened this week with Venezuela and um, Cuba playing uh, baseball games. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No volume. My apologies. I am not the best at technology. <laughs> Well, don't worry. You're in good company. You hear it there. The chants of Cuba Libre are heard at an Olympic qualifying event here in South Florida. Cell phone video also showing this woman holding a banner that read Free Cuba. 
She walked out actually onto the field during the baseball game between Cuba and Venezuela that was held up in West Palm Beach. Police took the woman off the field and then out of the ballpark. We're told she's not going to face any charges, though. Venezuela, by the what? way, ball game score of six to five. The Cuban team is a bit shorthanded after a member of the squad defected within hours of arriving in South Florida last Wednesday. All right. So I wanted to show that because, first of all, I love that the Cubans came to Miami uh, to play or West Palm or somewhere here in Florida and um, they got booed. The Venezuelans and the Cubans got booed. But um, anyways, I thought it was great. The better part of all of that is that we have Cuban baseball player Cesar Prieto. He was who, hired as a caretaker yep. for the elderly, but police say that she was- I apologize. Them out of thousands of Actually, that uh, I said, completed your sentence perfectly. Did it really? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Caesar, and then he was hired as blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so Caesar, uh, well, that wasn't the sentence I definitely wanted. Caesar uh, Prieto, immediately upon reaching Florida's coast, defected, which is a word I love to, I love to say because nowhere else do people defect when they leave their country? Any Americans moving anywhere else in the world, we leave, we relocate, we emigrate, we move. We don't defect, Cubans defect. And so uh, Cesar Prieto defected, and that's why in this news story, they're saying that they were one less. But my favorite, favorite, favorite thing that I have to tell everybody and show is this, which, um, let me just get it up on screen first. which is Miguel Diaz, uh, Miguel Diaz Canel Bermudez, who is the Cuban... Um, oh, that SOB. Yeah, so I have the translated tweet because, of course, he says it up. Oh, boy, I'm sharing my screen instead of... Let me stop. Anyways, he shared the picture of... the. Sorry, guys, I am a disaster. Um, and he says, when writing the history of these challenging days, a chapter will have to be dedicated to the manhood of the Cuba team. Vilely harassed by a handful of mercenaries, our players have put dignity at the top. They have made the shamelessness of that adversary more visible. Oh, them with the dignity. It's all about the dignity. So one of our friends uh, who goes by the online name of Dadman, uh, he's one of the admins. Uh, and, and he's the, yeah, he's the uh, founder of Liberty Means, but he calls himself Dadman. He speaks fluent Spanish. He actually speaks the Cuban dialect, even though he is what we would call a gringo. He learned he's actually a polyglot. Uh, my hat's off to him. Anyway, the guy used to work for Major League Baseball. Don't quote me if I'm wrong. And what he would do is in other countries, he never went to Cuba, but Mexico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Colombia, wherever it was that Cuba sent people to play. He would find an opportunity to go quietly, you know, walk up to one of the Cuban players when they're alone and. Uh, you know, just put a little note in their pocket uh, or, you know, in their hand or just, you know, whisper a couple of years. Hey, man, there's a couple of different teams over in Miami that really are interested in having you. Uh, if you go over there, they would pay you, you know, X million million dollars just for your first year. Uh, your family will be taken care of for the rest of your life and you'll be doing what you love um, and, and you'll have freedom of expression. But most importantly, you'll have lots and lots of money. So for people who are working these incredibly long days, because, man, I used to think baseball was one of the easier sports until I actually saw one of my friends uh, playing on the college team. Just their tryouts or, or, or their practices. Oh, my gosh. No, those dudes are exhausted. That baseball is labor. Playing baseball, training, all that crap, it is labor. So these guys are doing labor, and they're putting all their talent into it. And at the end of the day, they're making very little money. Whatever they do, win abroad, uh, or their team wins in, in tournaments, or, or if they get uh, picked up by a team, then they have to give most of that money to the government, which absolutely sucks. Uh, but the most important part is they don't have freedom of expression. They don't really have freedom of movement. Dadman was telling us there's this thing called um, the flag, the, the the flag ceremony, which they'll pick uh, when, whenever a Cuban mission goes out of the country. So it could be doctors, could be teachers, baseball players, whatever it is. When a Cuban mission goes out of the country, there will be a designated guy that they will pick from the group and they will say, congratulations, you are guarding the honor flag. And like they will make this dude put his hand on the Cuban flag and say an oath 
where basically, you know, teacher, uh, I will be back on the bus with my partner. Uh, and, and that's what the oath is. So if anybody from the team or, or the, uh, or the, the group, um, <laughs> I'll get to that comment in a minute. If anybody from the team or the group defects, then the guy who has flag duty, the guy who has flag duty, he goes to jail and that sucks. So while I'm very happy for the, the player who defected, I also have to ask myself, who did the government put on flag duty? And is that guy in jail because he failed to bring somebody back onto the school bus? Okay, estoy permitido para que más hable. <laughs> oh, man, Zach. <laughs> you know, there are several references to that, so I just I just showed one. <laughs> okay, so people think you don't let me talk. Meanwhile, I'm letting Zach talk unless I interrupt him. Now you know why I interrupt you, Zach. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I want to thank everybody for uh, being with us tonight and talking to us, especially the people in the comments. I really appreciate it. Keeps the, the, the conversation going, keeps it lively. Come on, Zach. You don't have to be like that. <laughs> All right, guys. Remind me never to <laughs> say, put something I'm up. I'm letting again. you talk. <laughs> I am doing what our audience wanted, and now they don't want me to do it. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for, for joining us uh, tonight. We are doing this every Wednesday night, uh, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time. And so please come join us. And uh, don't forget to support the Libertarian Party. They're the ones that let us uh, come on here and rant for a bit. Uh, join the LP, if possible, and we'll see you next week. Any and work? also, please donate, to, donate $5 to the LP of Texas so that they can run somebody against these knuckleheads in Uvalde, Texas, trying to start a civil war. Thank you. That's all. <laughs> See y'all next week. Good night. <laughs>